This is a flowchart in your textbook, which you may or may not find helpful. If it's not helpful to you, just ignore it. If, if this is something that supports how you think about things, then by all means, use it. So the general idea for nomenclature is there are three different groups or categories of chemicals that we're going to learn how to name in this class that I've already talked about. Ionic compounds, molecular compounds, and acids. And they each have a different set of naming rules. So the first thing is to identify what kind of a compound am I looking at. The way we do that is for ionic compounds, you look at the first element, is it a metal? If it's a metal, it's ionic. You don't have to think anymore. If there's a metal in it, it's ionic. Now, there's one small group of compounds that are ionic that don't have a metal in them, and those are the ones that start with ammonium ion. So if it starts with NH4, that's the ammonium ion, and those are also going to be ionic. We recognize molecular compounds because they only have nonmetals in them, and acids because they start with H. Then the acids, we just went over that. There's the binary, those are two elements, hydrogen and something else, and that's where you use the hydro prefix. The oxy acids contain oxygen. You look at the name of the oxy anion. If it's ite, you change the ending to us. If it's ate, you change the ending to ik. The molecular compounds are where we use the Greek prefixes, mono, di, tri, etc., to indicate the number of each element that are present. The ionic compounds, um, those are the ones that there are the most of because there's so many possible ionic compounds. Um, your book makes a deal about these two different types. Um, I think that's a little bit silly. The way I prefer to think of it is look at the metal Find the metal on the periodic table. Ask yourself, is it in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? If it is, we know what the charge is. We don't need to write it down. The charge of group 1 metals is plus 1. The charge of group 2 is plus 2. The charge of group 3 is plus 3. Then zinc and silver are just down the steps from aluminum, 3, 2, 1. All the other metals can form more than one kind of ion. And we can't tell from the periodic table what they're doing. So they use a Roman numeral in parentheses right after the name of the metal to tell us which one it is. The example here, FeCl3. Iron is not in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver. So we have to look at the charge on the anion. Chloride has a minus one charge. There are three of those, so a total of minus three charge. There's one cation. It must have a plus three charge. So we figure out the charge that way, and then in the name, we write iron three chloride. Now, capital I's can be confusing. I had a student last night struggling with a homework problem, and she got it wrong because she used a key that made a symbol that looked like a capital I, but it was a lowercase l. Computers don't seem to grasp that it looks the same, right? Roman numerals are capital I's and capital V's. Okay, so you have to use the capital I on your keyboard when you're entering those. And that's nomenclature in a nutshell. Um, this example in the textbook is trying to show you how you might use that flow chart. So like H2SO3. Well, you identify it as an acid, and then you go down the chart and you see it's an oxy acid because it has oxygen in it. The ending of its ion ends in ite, and so that's how you end up with sulfurous acid. May or may not be helpful.